الذي نصطفى عنا بعد فاعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قد أطلح من زكاها وقد خاب من رساها فرق العزة عنا يسجون وسلاما على المسلمين الحمد لله رب العالمين اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد مبارك وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد مبارك وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد مبارك وسلم أبو عبد الله أبراج The next chapter is Biyan al-Sabab al-Lazi bihi yunalu husn al-Khulqi ala al-Jumlati The chapter on means by which good character can be acquired. Basically, generally speaking, so he's not talk, going to talk about specifics here. He's going to talk about general means through which the good character can be acquired. So he starts with Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Qad urifat anna husnan khulaq khulaqi yarji'u ila i'tidali quwwat al-aqli wa kamal al-hikmati wa ila i'tidali quwwat al-ghadabi wa shahbati wa kawniha lil-aqli muti'atan للأقل مطيعة وللشر شرع أيضا وهذا الاعتدال يحصل على وجهه. So he is then reminding us what we did in that technical session. Just reminding us that what is good character? It is اعتدال the balance of قوت of قوت الأقل and that actually results in the kamal of the hikmat, the perfection of the wisdom of the hikmat, وَإِلَىٰ اَعْتِدَالِ قُوَّةِ الْغَدَبِ وَالشَّهْوَةِ And the اعتدال, the balance of the quwwat of the ghadab and the shahwat, وَكَوْنِهَا لِلْأَقْلِ مُتِيْعَةً In a state that it is submissive to the aql and the sharia. Alright? Everybody understood that. وَهَذِ اَعْتِدَالُ يَحْسُلُ عَلَىٰ وَجْهَيْنِ And this is achieved by two ways. Number one, أحدهما بجود إلهي إلهي بجود بجود إلهي وكمال فطري وبجود إلهي وكمال فطري بحيث يخلق الإنسان ويولد كامل كامل الأقل حسن الخلق قد كفى سلطان الشهوة والغضب بل خلق تاء معتدل معتدلتين منقا منقادتين للعقل والشعر فيصير عالما بغير تعليم ومؤدبا بغير تأديب كعيسى بن مريم ويحيى بن زكريا عليهما السلام وكذا سائر الأنبياء صلوات الله عليهم أجمعين ولا يبعد أن يكون في التعب والفطرة ما قد ينال بالاكتساب فرب صبي خلق صادق لهجة سخيا جريا وربما يخلق بخلافه فيحصل ذلك فيه بالاعتياد ومخالطة المتخلقين بهذه الأخلاق وربما يحصل بالتعليم Okay, so he said number one, the means number one, general means number one, that a person can get good character, yani the aitadal in the quwwat of the ghadab and the shahwat and the ilm, and then also under the bounds of sharia and aqal. So he said the first way that one can get this is that he has the father and the karam of Allah Ta'ala, as simple as that. That... From day one, as soon as he's born, that he is a, he has good character and he's kamal al aql Some people are, some be, kids are born with, mashallah, very bright intellect. Very intelligent kids. Very, very intelligent kids. 
And also they are very good in character. A lot of other, from day one. I say in the shahwat and the ghadab are not dominant on him. In fact, both of them are submissive of the aql and the sharia. From day one. This, like this, the fadl and the grace and the mercy of Allah Ta'ala. From day one, it is, you know, the kids are like that. He says that for such a person, yani who has this, uh, how do you say that? That they are by birth, huh? innate. The innate or by birth they are such kids, right? Then for this person, he says, he says that you don't need to give him the, the outward ta'aleem to become an alim. And you don't, uh, need to train him, you don't have to teach him adab to become a mu'addab. Yani he is an alim by, uh, by, by birth, and he is a person of other by birth. So you don't need to actually train him that much because this, this ilm and this adab, he is, or is, is fitratan, is fitri, and he's very natural. Allah ta'ala, God gifted, as we say, you know, he's God gifted quality, God gifted child. He says you don't need to actually train him a lot because Allah ta'ala has made him such, and they are like that. He then, he said like, he said, Isa alayhi salam, Sayyidina Yahya alayhi salam, Sayyidina Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and all the Anbiya alayhi wa salat, salatu wa tasneem. All of them, they are like that. God gifted such kids. Nobody trained them. Who trained Sayyidina Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Nobody. There was no teacher. He was a Nabi al-Ummi. He was unlettered prophet. Nobody taught him. He didn't have a teacher. He didn't have a sheikh. In fact, they don't have because the teacher has higher status than the student, right? So if the prophet cannot have a teacher, only a prophet can be a teacher of a prophet. But they are God gifted children. So this is, this happens that they are God gifted from day one, it's Fadl and the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he says that this is also not very an impossible thing that that a person has those qualities in their fitrat, in their tabiat, in their mizaj, in their personality that people actually get by hard work. And a lot of kids, they say from the day one, they are true, they're truthful. They're truthful, they are courageous. They're generous. But from day one, they're kids like that. You know, they're very generous kids. You know, they want to spend. They love to. They're brave kids. Right? And some kids are not. He said, and, and the other kids, from day one, they're liars. They're clever. They're very coward, buddha. And they are very stingy. They're kids like that. Like, nobody has taught them that, but they're like that. But he says, sometimes... These osaf, these characteristics are achieved, are achieved by the kids or by other people by being with those people who have these qualities. For example, if your friend is a very stingy guy and he will only teach you being stingy. You know, you're, you plan to spend and he will t- tell you, oh, you, what are you doing? You shouldn't be spending. Save your money for t- tomorrow. Save your money. You never know. They can be rainy days. These sort of things. Right? So you be, you be with those sort of people and you also get all of these characteristics. Sometimes, you know, people get married and just because their spouse, their husband or wife, they have some qualities and people, the other spouse also get these qualities just because of being with them. I learned a lot from my wife, honestly speaking. I never used to drink tea as well, you know, because my wife used to drink tea and now I can't, cannot live without tea. <laughs> so this happens. He says that, that these also, these characteristics, many times, they are achieved by being with those people. And, and many times they are, they are achieved by learning. You know, you go to a teacher, you go to a sheikh and you be with his, in his company and that's how you Achieve it. So this is the first means by which you get these characteristics, this, this, these good qualities. Number two. وَالْوَجْهُ الثَّانِي اِكْتِسَابُ هَذِهِ الْإِخْلَاقِ بِالْمُجَاهِدَةِ وَالْرِيَادَةِ Second means is by struggling. By mujahida and riyada. By mujahida and riyada. 
I tell you before I start this. My friends, we have been doing something since this morning. Right? Before I forget it. Inshallah, I won't, but I don't want to lose this opportunity. Because I remember it now. We have been doing all of this since this morning. And we have been trying to understand that what does it mean to have good ikhlaq. To remove the ill traits of our character. And we know that this is the only thing that benefits us on the day of judgment. This is the only thing that gives us the sa'ada of this dunya and the akhirah. So, everybody must make an effort to bring these qualities within their personalities. It is not a joke. One must struggle. One must have to have that thing within themselves in their heart that should, that should encourage them to bring these qualities within themselves. If people are stingy people, you know, they must spend. If people have this anger issue, they must control their anger. If people cannot control their eyes, they must work on themselves to control their gaze. If people cannot control their lust, then they must work on themselves to control their desires. We are not animals. We are not animals. We are human beings. We have a lot of things to take care of in this dunya before we die. We are here to earn our akhirah. We are not here to be animals. To fulfill our desires all the time, day and night. Subhanallah. This is not the goal. This is not the job. We are here for something else. So we must work on ourselves. We have to do riyadat and we have to do mujahida. We must. And this is the second way that he is talking about. But, you know, but people, they run away from mujahida. They run away from riyadat. They don't want to do that. Why? Because it's heavy on the nafs. But the reward is also great. This is a need, this is a goal, this is must, this is mandatory. You see, nobody should feel that, you know, we should run away from it. We must do these mujahidat in order to control ourselves, whatever it takes, whatever it takes. You know, some people say we cannot control our gaze, a lot, you know, we feel so much pain if we control our gaze. True, if people don't have the habit of doing that, initially it's very, very hard. Because people have the habit of doing that. And I tell them, you know, don't worry. Even if you have pain, you must, you know, keep keep your gaze down. Even if you get a heart attack. Even if you die, who cares? Who cares? At least we will, you know, inshallah, we will die a death of martyr, shaheed. In the cause of Allah Ta'ala, right? That's what martyrdom is. To die in the path of Allah. This is indeed dying in the path of Allah. Andraji, Andraji, come to a lot of space. Move closer, please. A lot of space. So we must control ourselves. We have to do mujahida. If people have anger issues, must control their anger. If people have any issue of their character, must work on themselves. Must. Whatever it takes, whatever mujahida it takes, whatever it takes, they must work on themselves. And and that is why a sheikh is needed. And that is not only a sheikh, but a sheikh with, with you, who you love with your, the core of your heart, that you can submit to with the core of your heart, so that if he says something, that you must take with, you don't have a choice but to take it in your life. You just cut up your own choices and you just take that choice. Because he will tell you something that will be for your benefit to improve your character. I mean, we have been following our nafs all our life long. So we have to fix ourselves. So there has to be, that's the whole purpose of the sunnah of Allah Ta'ala, that makunu ma'asadikin, you hook yourself up with the, with the mashayikh, and you must have to have learn, must, must have to learn other through somebody, through a shaykh. This whole concept of bed and taking a shaykh and having love and trust and khidmat, and all of that, it is for this purpose that you have somebody outside your own nafs that you can listen to, that you can Submit to, so that you, your character can be improved. He tells you, you know, sorry, but you're not going to eat ice cream for the next five days. Even I love ice cream, I'm not going to eat, I eat ice cream, because I'm getting fat. Huh? Whatever. This is why we must do mujahida. We must do riyadah. He said this is the second way to, to, to get gain the perfection of character is by mujahida. By Mujahida and Riyadat. Yani, wa'ani bihi, hawal al nafsi, al al amali, al lati, yaqtadibha, al khuluku, al matlubu. 
فمن اراد مثلا ان يحصل لنفسه خلق الجود فطريقه ان يتكلف تعاتي فعل الجواد وهو بذل المال فلا يزال يطالب نفسه ويواظب عليه تكلفا وجاهدا نفسه فيه حتى يصير ذلك طبعا له ويتيسر عليه فيصير به جوادا وكذا من اراد ان يحصل لنفسه خلق التواضع وقد غلب عليه الكبر فطريقه ان يواظب على افعال المتواضعين مده مديده وهو فيها مجاهد نفسه ومتكلف الى ان يصير ذلك خلقا له وتابعا فيتيسر عليه وجميع الاخلاق المحفوظه شرعا تحصل من هذا الطريق وغايته ان يصير الفعل الصادر منه لذيذا فالسخي هو الذي يستلذ بذل المال الذي يبذله دون الذي يبذله عن كراهته ومتواضع هو الذي يستلذ التواضع is so he's saying that we must do mujahida yani you take those yani you you take you take those amal those actions from your nafs through which you can achieve that required character for example he says that if somebody wants to become generous person then he should follow generous people he must just follow generous people he should do taqlid of the generous people and that he should try to spend the way that the generous people spend even if it means that he has to be patient with his nafs even if it's hard for himself and he said he must continue to follow these people until his nafs becomes habitual of that and the sakhaba the generosity becomes his tabiat his mizaj must do a mujahida if you're stingy you can't you so hard for you to spend you earn 50000 dirhams a month but subhanallah you know when it comes down to spending in the path of allah you can't even take out 500 dirhams it's extenuous it's not a quality of a believer subhanallah you go on vacation they're ready to spend 10000 20000 dirhams you know but it comes down to spending in the cause of allah it's so hard for people to spend 500 dirhams forget about 500 50 dirhams and they will go and eat ice cream every other day of 50 dirhams shaitan they can spend on their nafs to get the pleasures of the dunya ice cream vacations all of that you know but outwardly speaking giving in the path of allah it's not coming to us right it's not coming to my wife and my family and my children so it's going out so lack of iman allah taala says it come to come back to you many many times more inshallah barakat will come you know the calamities will be removed and all of those things but because no iman is so hard for people to spend in the cause of allah subhanahu wa taala they say that if you have we have this these sort of habits then follow people who actually spend you you just take a company of a person who you see that he spends so much in the path of allah just follow that even if it's hard for you you just, even if it's hard for you doesn't matter and you should continue doing that continue doing that continue doing that until it becomes habitual it becomes a habit and and he says similarly if somebody is arrogant and he wants to be humble then he should take the company of the people who are humble people and they should see as to what are they doing as to how they how they walk how they sit how they talk how they serve even if it, it means it's hard for them you see that these humble people they are ready to clean the bathrooms the floors the toilets everything they're ready to wash the sinks and they're ready to you know to 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 carry the shoes of their mashayikh and all of that this is why it's all done the khidmat part this is why it is done that you force yourself in doing the things that are hard for the nafs and you actually bring that humility within yourself he's saying you must do that you must do the mujahada even if it's hard initially it's very hard oh i'm from the us he doesn't know what does it mean to a person from the west he is an easterner he is from bangladesh and he is from india wow what does he know about the us arrogance right to so say this is how people feel like right oh we are from the west right i i was i've been there i know the how how the kids behave not only the us i'm talking about all the people who are brought up in the west they have very different mentality not saying anything bad about them but they feel that as if they are very different from they and the human beings who live on the eastern side of the world they are have a different they have white colored blood as opposed to their red blood this is something people feel like oh they don't know i'm intelligent i've gone to harvard and i've gone to 
MIT and I've gone to Oxford and I've gone to Cambridge. Who, what do they know? These people who sit in the madrasa all day long, they don't even know. This is, this is a mentality of a lot of people. So they they have arrogance. So, subhanAllah, and you can two people, they take bail with the shaykh at the same time, but the person, subhanAllah, they have seen people, they don't even want to do the similar khidmat as the other people are doing, because they don't feel like it. Oh, you know, it's not for me. Why? Are you from the Mars, or Venus, or Jupiter, or Saturn, or Pluto? What? Because the whole concept is to humble yourself down. Well, he is trying to humble himself down. He is trying to improve his character. What's up to you? What's, what's your issue? What's wrong with you? So you must, even if it's hard on yourself, you must act the same way as any of the, um, all the other people are doing who either have achieved humility or trying to achieve humility. He says that they must do it until that habit becomes, that character, characteristic, that humbleness becomes his habit. And the humility becomes easy for him. He says all the good qualities, to get all the good qualities, this is the way. Either you're God gifted, or you have to struggle. And he sees the intiha of that, the, the, the goal of the, the ending of that, that, that particular characteristic becomes the tabiyat, becomes the mizad, becomes the, the habit of a person, and he starts feeling good about it. He starts feeling good about it. For example, he says that a person will be called generous, that when he will spend money, he feels good about it. Um, he feels, he feels so good about it. He's crying out of happiness. Oh, I spent my wealth in the cause of Allah. Out of happiness. He feels, he tears the pleasure out of spending. That will be called a generous man. And if he spends, but he feels pain, he will not be called a generous man. Similarly, he says that the humble, humble person will be that person when he becomes, he, he shows humility, he feels good about it. He tastes the pleasure out of it. And if he doesn't feel the pleasure out of it, he says that he will, he's, he's, he's not humble. He doesn't have, he's not gotten humility yet. And he says similarly, as he, he, as far as he feels the taste, he will not get that quality. He says that all of these ikhlaq, these good character, characteristics of a human, of a human, of personality will not be rasik, will not be firm until the nafs starts hating all of the bad traits and starts feeling pain by doing any bad trade. And all of the good qualities do not come in his habit. And he doesn't start doing it with all his, in his zeal and, and, and his, his passion. He will not have that characteristic until he starts hating the bad traits and he starts doing all the good traits with passion, with love. He starts feeling good about it. He says, it comes in the hadith. وَجُعِلَتْ قُرَّةُ عَيْنِ فِي الصَّلَاةِ That the coolness of my eyes have been created in the prayers. The coolness of my eyes has been created in the prayers. وَقَدْ تَقَدَّمَ وَمَهْمَا كَانَتِ الْعِبَادَاتُ بِتَرْكُ الْمَحْتُورَاتِ مَعَ كَرَاهَةٍ وَإِسْتِسْقَالٍ فَهُنْ نُقْصَانُ فَلَا يُنَالُ كَمَالُ السَّعَادَةِ بِهِ نَعَمْ الْمُوَازَةُ عَلَيْهَا بِالْمُجَاهَدَةِ خَيْرٌ وَلَكِنْ بِالْإِضَافَةِ إِلَى تَرْكِهَا لَا بِالْإِضَافَةِ إِلَى فِعْلِهَا أَنْ تَوْئِنْ وَلِذَلِكَ قَالَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى وَإِنَّهَا لَكَبِيرَةٌ إِلَّا عَلَى الْخَاشِعِينَ وقال صلى الله عليه وسلم عبد الله في الرداء في الرداء فإن لم تستطع ففي الصبر على ما تكره خير كثير so he says that the, the reason that Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was feeling good about him being in the prayer, he said that the coolness of my eyes is in the prayer because that good habit had, be, that good quality had become his habit. 
He says, as far as the nafs will feel burdened in the worship and in leaving of the things that Allah Ta'ala has made forbidden, there will be still deficiency in his character. And he will not achieve the perfection in Sa'ada. But he then he says that it is better that if you still feel that hardship and that pain in doing good actions, it is better than leaving them altogether. It is leaving them, than leaving them altogether. It's still better to do that. Yani don't feel that I'm feeling hard, I'm feeling pain in doing this good action. I feel hard in spending, I feel hard in being humble, I feel hard in getting up for the prayers. You know, doing, still doing that with mawazah, but yani with, with consistency is better than not doing them at all. But if you start doing it with, with, with love, with pleasure, that's the best. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَإِنَّهَا لَكَبِيرَةٌ إِلَّا عَلَى الْخَاشِئِينَ That prayer is very hard, except for the people who have khushu in their hearts. Yani if people get that quality of khushu, then the prayer becomes so easy for them. And then, but Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said that, that worship Allah, أُعْبُدَ اللَّهَ فِي الرَّدَى فَإِنْ لَمْ تَسْتَطِعْ فَفِي الصَّبْرِ That you worship Allah in with pleasure, with rida, with contentment. And if you're not able to do that, فَفِي الصَّبْرِ Then be patient. عَلَى مَا تَكْرَهُ خَيْرٌ كَسِيرٌ He says that, that, that there, that thing that is, that you unlike, to be patient in, to be patient in that has a lot of good. And still it's a lot of good. Still, it's a lot of good in that. If you don't feel like getting up for fajr, it's hard. And if you get up and you feel pain, it still has a lot of good. But the best is that you love getting up at fajr and the hajj then. That's the best. But if you don't, still at this point, continue doing it, continue doing it, continue doing it, until it becomes your habit and you start feeling good about it. And then he says, ثم لا يكن في نيل السعادة الموعودة على حسن الخلق استلذاذ التعت واستكراه المعصية في زمان دون زمان فالينبغي أن يكون ذلك على الدوام وفي جملة العمر وكلما كان العمر أطول كانت الفضيلة أرسخ وأكمل ولذلك لما سئل صلى الله عليه وسلم عن السعادة فقال طول العمر في تعة في تعة الله تعالى he says that it is also, it is not also the kamal of the sa'ada. That you sometimes luck, li like and love to do a certain action, a good action, and you feel good about it, you taste it. And sometimes exactly the opposite. It's not the kamal of that, your, your goodness. But all the time, it should be the same. Then once you achieve that characteristic, then you should not lose that. You should not lose that. And, but he said with the passage of time, where as the life moves on with more age, you know, you should increase in your likeness and your love and your pleasure for that good action. And then Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa was asked about, uh, about a person, yani anis sa'ada, that what is sa'ada? So he said, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, yani felicity, sa'ada means felicity. Then he was asked about the felicity, what the a person who is, who is virtuous, who is, um, with a good ending, as I said. So he said, tulul umri fi ta'atillahi, who has a long life in the submission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why? Because, be the more he grows older, the good that that he is doing, he will become more firmer in that. He will like that more. He will love that more. And, and you know, subhanAllah, the more you love a good act, that is a sign that you are a saint. That's a sign that you are a saint. And he said that is the reason that the prophets, that's the reason that the Anbiya alayhi salam and awliya of Allah, they dislike that sometimes. There are two things. Sometimes they like death and sometimes they dislike death. 
The reason they like that because this is the meeting with their beloved, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they dislike that sometimes because it is, uh, you know, you are not able to achieve any more from this dunya. Because you are not going to get more perfection, relatively more perfection in the submission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why. Because a dunya mazra'atun akhirah. Because the life is 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 a place where you can you actually uh, how do you say that? Huh? It's a sowing ground. It's a sowing ground for the next. You you right. You harvest your crop in this dunya for the akhir. Basically, you harvest the crops in the next in the next world. But you sow the seeds here. You sow the seeds here. And the more you Allah Ta'ala gives you life, the more is the opportunity to sow the seeds for the akhir. Right? So it says, وَلِذَلِكَ كَرِهَ الْأَنْبِيَاءُ وَالْأَوْلِيَاءُ وَالْمَوْتَ فَإِنَّ الدُّنْيَا مَزْرَعَةُ الْآخِرَةِ وَكُلَّ مَا كَانَتْ الْعِبَادَاتُ أَكْثَرَ بِطُولِ الْعُمْرِ كَانَتْ ثَوَابُ أَجْزَلَ وَالنَّفْسُ أَسْكَ وَأَطْهَ والأخلاق أقوى وأرسخ وإنما مقصود العبادات تأثيرها في القلب وإنما يتأكد تأثيرها بكسرة المواظبة على العبادات وغاية هذه الأخلاق أن يقطع عن النفس حب الدنيا So he's saying that that is why the prophets and the awliya of Allah they hate death just like that, because dunya is the sowing seed for the akhirat. And the more you will have life, the more will be the ibadat, and the more will be the ajat, the reward and the sawab. And the nafs will become from tahir, will become athar. And it is pure today, it will be purer. And the akhlaq, they are strong today, they will be stronger. And from beautiful to more beautiful, from good to excellent. And, and also that the goal of the ibadat is that they have an effect on the heart. And the, it will only affect the heart when people have that consistency in their ibadat and their good deeds. You do it today, one thing you don't do tomorrow, gone. No effect. Have to have consistency. You know what? You turn on water or you don't turn on water. For say your tap is leaky. And uh, there is uh, the the water drops are coming out drop by drop, drop by drop, and just one little small little drop. What strength does it have? Nothing. But if you don't fix the trap and you go after a year, you will see that in the in the bricks down where that it is, it was dripping. You will see that there will be a little, there'll be a little, uh, huh? Sort of a pitching out there. Gee. Right? Why? Because that drop has been consistent, consistently falling at that place. If you do one, any, or you shoot water, like with whatever force, right, for, at the same place for like 10 minutes, it won't create anything. It's not about doing a good action with such energy once and then just leave it for all, for good. It's not going to have any effect on the house. What affects the heart is that you consistently do something. Consistently. أَحَبُّ الْعَمَالِ إِلَى اللَّهِ أَدْمَمُهَا وَإِنْ قَلَّ Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that the best actions here Allah Ta'ala are the ones that are consistent. Even if they are small, it doesn't matter. Consistent action, muwazibah, consistency, that's the key. So you'll, and you will only be able to do that if you love it. If you don't love it and you're hating it, you'll do it today and possibly you'll leave it tomorrow. Right? <coughs> and then he says that, الْأَخْلَاقِ أَنْ عَنِ النَّفْسِ حُبُّ الدُّنْيَا وَيَرْسُخَ فِيهَا حُبُّ اللَّهِ تَعَالَى The goal of the ikhlaq, why are we doing the, trying to get this ikhlaq? Of course, it's the order of Allah, that's a good thing, that's going to benefit us. But he says that the maqsad of this, the vaya, the 
goal of the ikhlaq is that your nafs, yani your heart, your spiritual heart is cut off from the love of the dunya and the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala becomes for a minute. فَلَا يَكُونُ شَيْءٌ أَحَبَّ إِلَيْهِ مِنْ لِقَاءِ اللَّهِ تَعَالَىٰ عَزَّ وَجَلْ And nothing remains more beloved to him than the meeting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. فَلَا يَسْتَعْمِلُ جَمِيعَ مَالِهِ إِلَّا عَلَى الْوَجْهِ الَّذِي يُوصِلُهُ إِلَيْهِ فَغَدَبُهُ وَشَحْبَتُهُ مِنَ الْمُسَخَّرَاتِ لَهُ فَلَا يَسْتَعْمِلُهَا إِلَّا عَلَى الْوَجْهِ الَّذِي يُوصِلُهُ إِلَى اللَّهِ تَعَالَى He says that so the, the, the best thing that he likes is meeting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he will spend all his wealth according to that. What will bring him that closeness to Allah Ta'ala? Even if spending on your wife, even if spending on your children, even if spending on your parents, even if it's spending on your relatives, or even if spending in the cause of Allah. But the, always there is a goal in the back of their minds that my purpose of spending is Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala so that I can, I can be closer to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And he says that the ghadab and the shahwat, that irascible nature, irate nature, that the, the nature of ghadab, the anger as we said, and the shahwat, the desires, both have been made musakhar. Yani they have been, they can be con- controlled by a human being. And what we should do, he said that we should use both of these strengths, yani of the, of the ghadab and the shahwat, according to shariat, and we should make them a goal to have that meeting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then we should be happy with these sort of actions and we should taste it, we should feel the pleasure of it. وَذَلِكَ بِنْ يَكُونُ مَوْزُونًا بِمِزَانِ شَعْرِ وَالْأَقْلِ ثُمَّ يَكُونُ بَعْدَ ذَلِكَ فَرْحًا بِهِ مُسْتَلَزًّا لَهُ وَلَا يَنْبَغِي أَنْ أَنْ يَسْتَبْعِدَ مَصِيرَ الصَّلَاةِ إِلَى حَدٍ تَصِيرُ هِيَ قُرَّةُ الْعَيْنِ وَمَصِيرَ الْعِبَادَاتِ لَذِيذَةً فَإِنَّ الْعَادَةَ تَقْضِي تَقْتَضِي فِي النَّفْسِ عَجَائِبَ أَغْرَبَ مِنْ ذَلِكَ He says that if somebody, people get amazed, you know, oh, coolness of the eyes in the prayer, he so feels so hard getting up for fajr. People don't understand that. Coolness of eyes, my cool, coolness of my eyes is in the prayer. What does it mean? We so hard to get up for fajr. They don't understand that. He says that if somebody gets Pleasure in the prayers or the coolness of their eyes is in the prayers or in other ibadat or they like other ibadat, that is not an amazing thing. Why do you think it's so amazing? He says that in the nature of the human beings, there are more strange things that you see that they find pleasure in. He says, فَإِنَّ قَدْ نَرَى الْمَلُوكَ وَالْمُنْعِمِينَ فِي أَحْزَارٍ دَائِمَةٍ you see that they are kings. They are people who have all the luxuries of their life. What should be the logical thinking about those people? That they are enjoying, right? They are all the players. It says, but we see that they are always in some sort of sorrow. They always have some headache, some issue all the time. See, subhanAllah, it's very amazing. You meet with so many people who have like subhanAllah, you know, the five, ten factories that they have and the Somala they earn millions per month and really but still whenever they come and you please make dua you know the business isn't running very well well what happened but they will find some excuse not to feel good about what they have this is very amazing you find very amazing things in them in the personalities of people oh you know what I was getting 80% profit this this month I got 70% over people get heart attacks like for that Really, subhanAllah, you're getting 70% be happy about it. Find me ways to thank Allah Ta'ala. Like, try to find reasons as to how can I thank Allah. Still I'm getting 70%, 50%, 40%. I'm not going in loss. There's a reason to thank Allah Ta'ala, right? Or even one month you went in loss. Did you forget the last 
थ्री ईयर दैट यू गोइंग इन प्रॉफिट कोई बात नहीं इस महीने अगर नुकसान हो गया इनशाला If you are thankful enough and you are making dua next time, next month again, it will start going up. But people just find excuses to be to feel bad. They say, "This is really amazing that these kings and these munaimin who are who have so many blessings, but they are in that sad state." He said, "What Nabi Muhammad? You know, he says we see that the people who gamble, because yaghlibu alayhi min al farri, that they are so happy." And they, so they are those who are poor gamblers. They lose all their money, but they lose and they get so happy about it. Well, let's not be kamari. He wa ma huwa fi ma yas 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 tasqilu ma'hu farhu nasi bi ghayri kamari ma an al kamara rubba ma salabhu malhu wa kharba baytahu wa tarku muflisa wa ma zalika fa huwa yuhibu. ويلتز به وذلك لطول الفه له وصرف نفسه اليه مده ثانيه he says that is very amazing you see these gamblers right and they are so poor and they lose and they're so happy and they feel good about it in fact that he says that if the state that he is in if the other people go in that state their life will become miserable but they're happy about it he says that the, with this this gamble they lose their wealth Their houses get destroyed. All of the players go away, and sometimes, you know, people, the security, the security people are after them for some crime that they might have committed in in there, you know. But says he says that it still does not leave. They do not get out of that habit because they are become so habitual. They become so habitual, and despite of the fact that sometimes they want to leave it, they will not be able to leave it. Isn't it strange? He said we find so strange things in people. He can, he still doesn't leave it. He's losing all of what he has: his family, his house, his money, his sukoon. But still, will do that, Ajib. Right? This is the human nature. He's talking about the nature of the human being. Why do you think that somebody is finding the coolness of his eyes in prayer? Look at what these people are doing. Wa kazalik al laibu bil hamami. قد يكتف طول النهار في هر الشمس قائما على رجليه بو الله بس بألمها لفره بالطيور وحركاتها وطيرانها وتحليقها في جم في جو السماء. He says you see that these people who have this habit of you know what they they, they fly pigeons. I don't know what do you call them. You know they fly pigeons. He said he stands all day in sun. And he doesn't feel the heat of the sun, and because he has that love for those pigeons, and he loves them, seeing them flying in the air, and he he wants he competes with the other pigeons. He's standing all day long. Isn't it amazing? Subhan, the people who play cricket all day in the heat, they love it, huh? Subhan. See, they love it. Night cricket in Ramadan. Masha, <laughs> they love it. Why do they do that? They love it. It's in their nature. They love it. So, wow, it's so hard for us to, to, you know, to find time to add to how can we sleep? But they will sacrifice their sleep and they will go and play cricket all night in Ramadan. Because they love it, that's why. It's not a joke. It's, it's it's in their nature. They love it. And he says similarly, the people who who are criminals, they are lashed day and night. Their hands are cut. They are given very strong punishment. But they take all of these punishment with so pleasure. So much so that the, the thieves thieves are killed, but still they will not tell that where have they kept the money that they have stolen. And they will not tell about their 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 gang. They will tell about them, even if they're killed. They will even their hand. He says that the reason is that they think that what they are doing is perfection, and they are reckless. They have that tahubur, and they think that that tahubur is shujaat, and they think that this balance that we should be having in the with the quwatul ghadab. They have this recklessness. They have the excess of that, and they think this is shujaat. And they are on the just path, 
and they are so habitual that they are not willing, they are not uh, scared of taking punishments for that. And they are, they become the source of pleasure for them. And it says there are some people, those mukhannas, that will make, that will change into, uh, they take the form of women. And they will go and, you know, will act like women. And they feel so proud about it. They think that they are, you know, they are, they are so good actors that they can, you know, act like women. They'll go and sit with them and they will go and beg like them. He said, so ajeeb. And they feel so good about it. He said, everybody who is in his habits, they are must. <laughs> they are drowned. They are so happy about what they are doing. Be it the kings or they are the, they are the beggars. And he said, the reason is that they have been doing those things with consistency throughout their life. They love it. He says that that فَإِذَا كَانَتِ النَّفْسُ بِالْعَادَةِ تَسْتَلِذُ الْبَاطِلَ وَتَمِيلُ إِلَيْهِ وَإِلَى الْمَقَابِهِ فَكَيْفَ لَا تَسْتَلِذُ لَوْ رُدَّتْ إِلَيْهِ مُدَّتًا If the nafs get so much pleasure in these false things and it can get inclination toward these bad things, then how come it is possible that he will not enjoy something that's true? And how come he cannot get inclined towards the good character? How come? He says it's not possible. He says in fact, وَالْتَمِزَةِ الْمَوَازَبَةِ عَلَيْهِ بَالْمَيْلُ النَّفْسِ إِلَى هَذِهِ أمور شني شنيعة خارج عن التابي يداه الميل إلى أكل الطين فقد شغلب على بعض الناس ذلك بالعادة فما ميله إلى الحكمة حكم حكمة وحب الله تعالى ومعرفته وعبادته فهو كالميل إلى الطعام والشراب فإنه مقتضى تبع القلب فإنه أمر رباني وميله إلى مقتضيات الشهوة غريب من ذاته وعارض على تبيه وَإِنَّمَا غِذَاءُ الْقَلْبِ الْحِكْمَةُ وَالْمَحْرِفَةُ وَحُبُّ اللَّهِ عَزَّ وَجَلَّ وَلَكِنْ إِنْ صَرَفْ عَنْ مُقْتَدَ طَبْعِهِ لِمَرْدٍ قَدْ حَلَّ بِهِ كَمَا قَدْ يَحُلُّ الْمَرْدُ بِالْمَعْدَةِ فَلَا تَشْتَهِ الطَّعَامَ وَالشَّرَابَ وَهُمَا سَبَبَانِ لِحَيَاتِهَا So he says that how is it possible that a person cannot get inclined towards a good thing? He said it is as if somebody has the inclination to eat mud. Will you say that it is natural? He said, no. If somebody gets inclined toward wisdom, towards the love of Allah, to the ma'afat of Allah, to the worship of Allah, it is as if somebody is inclined towards eating good food. Because eating good food is natural. Similarly, the love of Allah, the ma'afat of Allah, the ibadat of Allah, you know, it the inclination of all of that towards the heart is the reality of the heart. Because heart is the command of Allah. And he says that the inclination of the heart towards the shahwat, the, the, the desires of the, of the dunya, can be temporary, but it can never be permanent. And it can never be natural. He says the true Food of the heart is the wisdom, the hikmat, the ma'rifat of Allah, the love of Allah. And for some reasons, if he, he stay, gets changed from these natural things, then it is as if somebody gets some disease in their heart and he does not feel like eating anymore. In reality, the, 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 in, in the, in the, in the, in the, 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 what is required in the stomach is the food. And this is where his life depends. So then he says that he says, فَكُلُّ قَلْبٍ مَالَ إِلَى حُبِّ شَيْءٍ سَوَى اللَّهِ تَعَالَى فَلَا يُنُفُّكَ 
ينفك عن مرض بقدر ميله إلا إذا كان أحب ذلك الشيء لكونه معين له على حب الله تعالى ولا دينه وعند ذلك لا يدل ذلك على المرض فإذا قد عرف بهذا قطعا أن هذه الأخلاق الجميلة يمكن اكتسابها بالريادة بها تكلف الأحال الصادرة عنها ابتداء لتصير طبعا انتهاء وهذا من عجيب العلاقة بين القلب والجوارح عن النفس والبدن فإن كل صفة تظهر في القلب يفيد أثرها على الجوارح حتى لا تتحرك إلا على بق فهان لا محالة وكل فعل يجري على الجوارح فإنه قد يرتفع منه أثر إلى القلب والأمر فيه دور He says, so in, with this example, he continues I mean, from before that, that any heart that is inclined toward anybody but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that heart will be that much diseased. But he's saying that if that love is for the sake of Allah, then there is nothing wrong with that. If you love your shaykh for the sake of Allah, there is nothing. In fact, this is something that's praiseworthy. There's nothing wrong with that. He said, it will not be called a disease. It will be called natural love. And says, with this explanation, this has been proven that through riyada, through mujahida, through working hard, through struggle, one can get good character. Yani, initially, if it is the kalufan, it is by hardship. And if somebody is consistent, then in, eventually these, this ikhlaq will become natural and this ikhlaq will be established in that person. And he says that between the qalb and the, and the a'la, between the heart and the limbs, there is a very strange ta'alluq, there is a very strange connection that that attribute that is established in the heart, it definitely has an effect on the limbs. And the limbs, they actually move on the, on the, on the command of the heart. And similarly, he's saying that the limbs, the, the things that we do with the limbs, definitely it has an effect on the heart. And this door, this circle, circular motion, yani the heart having an effect on the limbs, and limbs having an effect on the heart, this will continue. And you know, and then he says that this hakika, this reality, will be able we'll be able to understand this reality with an example. Uh what you are of the Dalika Bim Salin and Shala Tala I think we'll start. What is that? Ten thirty or eleven thirty? Oh no we have time, sorry. I thought the time is up. I'm doing I wanted to finish this. I'm doing He said this can be understood by an example. Why you are of the Dalika Bim Salin. Bahua Anna man Arada and Yasir al Hasku fil Kitabati Lahu Sifatan Nafsiatan حتى يصير كاتبا بالطبع فلا طريق له إلا أن يتعاتى بجارحة اليد ما يتعاتاه الكاتب الحاذق ويواذب عليه مدة طويلة يحاكي الخط الحسن فإن فعل الكاتب هو الخط الحسن فيتشبه بالكاتب تكلفا ثم لا يزال يواذب عليه حتى يصير صفة وأصفة في نفسه فيصدر منه في الآخر الخط الحسن طبعا كما كان يصدر منه في الابتداء تكلفا فكان الخط الحسن هو الذي جعل خطها حسنا ولكن الأول بتكلف إلا أنه ارتفع منه أثر القلب ثم إن خفض من القلب إلى الجارحة فصار, فصار يكتب الخط الحسن بالتعب فكذلك من أراد أن يصير فقيها نفسه فلا طريق له إلا أن يتعاد أفعال الفقهاء وتكرار للفقه حتى تنعت ثمنه على قلبه سبة الفقه فيصير فقيها نفسه. So now he's saying example that if somebody wants to be expert in calligraphy, so the method to do that is that he should go to he's saying like a, a place in Damascus, like for example he goes to the expert of calligraphy expert calligraphers, and he will start doing taqlid of those people. And the way that they write, he should write this in a similar way. And if he starts, continue, continues doing that practice for a long time, you know, that kitab, that calligraphy will become his habit. And the beautiful letters, like initially that, and he would do that taqallufan, and with a hardship, now he will start writing that bila taqalluf, without any hardship. 
Similarly, he says that if somebody wants to become a faqih, a jurist, a sage, then he should follow, he should do the taqlid, he should follow the fuqaha. Yani, he should do, he should read the masail of the fiqh, you know, again and again, he should do takrar and i'ada. And until those masail becomes, you know, very natural to him, and it will, the, the effect of that will reach his heart, and he will become faqih with nafs. Yani, nafsan, he will become a faqih. Right? وَكَذَلِكَ مَنْ أَرَادَ أَنْ يَسِيرَ سَخِيًّا عَفِيفَ النَّفْسِ حَلِيمًا مُتَوَادِئًا فَالْيَلْزِمُهُ أَنْ يَتَعَادَ أَفْعَالَ هَأُولَاءِ تَكَلُّفًا حَتَّى يَسِيرَ ذَلِكَ تَبْعًا لَهُ فَلَا عِلَاجَ لَهُ إِلَّا ذَلِكَ he says that similarly, if somebody wants to become generous, or somebody wants to become muttaqi, somebody wants to become forbearing person, somebody wants to become a humble person, then he should do taqlid of similar people who truly have that generosity, who truly have that taqwa, who truly have that forbearance, who truly have that humility. And so he, he should do that. And initially he will have taqalluf, he will have hardship, he will do a taqallufan, but slowly, gradually, when you continue doing it consistently, then those afal will become his habit and it will actually become firm in his tabiyat. He says that to get the ikhlaq through hardship, this is the way. This is the way. Then he says that, وَكَمَا أَنَّ طَالِبَ فِقْحَ النَّفْسِ لَا لا يبأس لا ييأس لا ييأس من نيل هذه الرتبة بتعتيل ليلة ولا ينالها بتكرار ليلة فكذلك طالب تسكية النفس وتكميلها وتهلية وتهليتها بالأعمال حسنة لا ينالها بعبادة يوم ولا يحرم عنها بعصيان يوم وهو معنى قولنا إن الكبيرة الواحدة لا توجب الشقاء المؤبد ولكن الأطلة في يوم واحد تعدو إلى مثلها ثم تتداعى قليلا قليلا حتى تأنس النفس بالكسل والتهجر والتحسين رأسا فيفوتها فضيلة الفقه وكذلك صغائر المعاصي يجر بعدها إلى بعد حتى يفوت أصل السعادة بِهَدْمِ أَصْلِ الْإِيمَانِ in the الْخَاتِمَةِ Allah Allah. He says that we should know that just like there is a student of fiqh, right? He says if he, if he takes a holiday for one day, he is not, he doesn't lose his goal. He is a very good student, goes to the madrasa every day. One day for some reason he takes a leave. He says he doesn't lose his goal. And similarly, if it is a student who never studies and one day he is very... MashaAllah, passionate and he does takrar and iada with full passion and courage. He will not become a fakir. Right? So he, he says similarly, the good actions that through good actions one cannot achieve the tasfiyah, the purification of the heart He says that through the good actions, the student of the purification of the heart and the perfection, the beautification of his, his heart, he cannot achieve that with the one day of worship. With one day of worship. Yani you are very passionate today. Oh, I got up three in the morning. I, you know, did 10 rakas of tahajjud today and then you don't pray fajr for the next 10 days. So nobody can achieve the purification of the heart through that. He said that and similarly, if somebody is really into it, and he really is striving hard, he is really doing his mamulat with perfection, and he is, you know, he is trying to struggle, he is trying to struggle, and he is trying to get rid of his diseases, like by falling, as he has said, by falling somebody who has those good character, right, even if it's the kallufan, he says that one day if he slips, one day he slips. He says similarly, one day of slipping will not become a barrier for his progress. Just like a student, if he takes a leave for a day for some reason, it does not stop him from becoming a faqih. Similarly, if a person who is really sincere, but one day, someday, you know, for some, you know, people are human beings, are human beings. So one day of a shortcoming or slip will not stop him from his goal. 
But he says that it means then he, he's, he's saying this is the call of Ravakabirin. He says that this means that one sin will not become the stopper of his final success. But remember though, it is a possibility that a student takes a leave for one day and that will become the source of leaving for the second day. He's very, he enjoyed that leave so much. He said, okay, I'll take leave tomorrow as well. And then he takes a third leave. And then he will become lazy. And then the nafs will become habitual of not acting. And then he says this, in this particular example, that one day of leave will become the showstopper of him becoming a fakir, definitely. Understood? Because he said similarly is the similar is the case of the minor sins, the Sahira sins. That may people may slip, but then one sin can lead him to another sin. And when people sin a lot of so-called Sahira sins, they will all join together to become a Kabira sin. And I tell you, it's not the time of explaining the, 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 the sins, but know that any sin that's done with consistency is called a Kabira sin by default. It's called a Kabira. It's a major sin. so <laughs> قليل يد إلى الكثير فيصير القلب مقيدا بالسلاسل شهوات لا يمكن تخليته من خالبها. He says that just like one night of study will not affect a a per student of fiqh, but it you know slowly and gradually it will take effect. Similarly, one night of worship will also not have any effect, but it happens slowly and gradually. It happens slowly and gradually. People do any one month of Muraqaba and say, oh, I'm not going anywhere. Well, I'm on lesson one for three months. I was on lesson one for three years. I'm telling about myself. I was on lesson one for three years. <laughs> People get so impatient. He says that similarly one night of worship will not have that effect but slowly and gradually. Yani there is an effect happening, don't worry. Until the Sheikh tells you you're not going anywhere, don't worry about yourself. But he says it does not mean that we take one night or even one moment but the shortest form of Ibadat as a small thing. We should not take it like that. Because slowly, slowly, yani the, the small little things will become more, a lot. And sometimes small little worships become the long worship. He says that it is a possibility that a small little piece of worship because of a ikhlas is more rewarding than a big worship. So he says that a small worship is also very effective. Even he doesn't feel that. He said it doesn't matter that if you feel that or you don't feel that. Because
Because the goal of the ibadat, of the worship, of good character, of all of these good things is the reward. And Allah Ta'ala never wastes the reward. Allah Ta'ala never wastes the reward. Never think that the small little thing that I've done, the five dirham that I put in the charity box in the mall, it is nothing. It is not. Every single thing, if it's done with sincerity, then Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala rewards that. It is never wasted. And similarly, he's saying, just think about the masiyah, the sins in the same way. Then never take any small sin as small. Our mashayikh have said that don't see that if the sin is small or big, see who you are disobeying. Kisi guna ko chota mat samjho, ye socho ki kis ki na farmani kar rahe ho. Ye socho ki na farmani kar kis ki raho. Allah ki, of Allah ta'ala. He said, a lot of fuqaha, they take the one day leave as, you know, as very small and it's ineffective. He says, but if they become habitual, then that can, beca- that can become the cause of continuous leaves. And they will also deceive themselves that, oh, it's one day leave, one day leave, one day leave. It's ineffective. And they will take away, themselves away from fiqh. And similarly, people who do not consider, consider sagiras, the minor sins, as, as, as anything important, and they take it as ineffective, and they will also always deceive themselves of toba. They always deceive themselves of toba. Koini, ite chota, chota kunai. Chala toba karnunga. I'll do toba someday. He said they will always continue deceiving themselves until they do not get the tawfiq of toba. And the death comes and it grasps them and because of their consistency in those small sins, their hearts have become black by that time and they do not get the tawfiq of the tawbah before their death. And he says, وَهُوَ الْمَعْنَى بِإِنْسِدَادِ بَابِ التَّوْبَةِ This is the meaning that the door of the tawbah is closed for them. وَهُوَ الْمُرَادُ بِقَوْلِهِ تَعَالَى وَجَعَلْنَا مِنْ بَيْنِ أَيْدِيهِمْ سَدًّا وَبِخَلْفِ وَمِنْ خَلْفِهِمْ سَدًّا فَأَغْشَيْنَاهُمْ فَهُمْ لَا يُبْسِرُونَ This is the meaning that Allah Ta'ala says that I have put a barrier in front of them and I put a barrier behind them and they are veiled and they cannot see. People don't even consider a sin as a sin. Koini go to the mall and we'll look at the women walking around or the men walking around. Farakini Pertam. And they always chote the path. Small little thing. They'll get angry and they'll shout at their wife and they don't even feel that they've done something wrong. SubhanAllah. Allah, He's saying that if people don't consider all of that, a time will come that Allah Ta'ala will not give them tawfiq of the tawbah because of they have been thinking that this is ineffective. This is ineffective. There's nothing wrong with that. They'll watch movies, go and sit on the couch and, and watch their Hollywoods and Bollywoods and they feel it's ineffective. There's nothing wrong with that. Choti si to baat, aisi ke baat hoge. Katal to nahi na kisi ko. Not killed anybody. I've not harmed anybody. I would watch the movie. Well, see, what are you doing? You are disobeying Allah Ta'ala. And if you think that there is a sin that is an ineffective sin, in reality you are making fun. And Allah Ta'ala will, and they will also, oh, cheek, tawbah karnunga, ji. Abhi to umari kya meri. I'm, I'm so young. Well, subhanAllah, we see things around us. A friend the other day, such a beautiful person, a chartered accountant, such an intelligent kid. He was used to be in this gathering a year ago, I'm telling you. And the other day he came and subhanAllah, he had some disease in his brain, just out of sudden. And he went to the doctor and they, you know, checked and he said he's a disease that only comes once in a million people. And you have, you have to operate your, uh, you know, your brain. And they cut his brain and they did whatever. And subhanAllah, we saw in the other day, the last gathering, 
We all saw him hold a wheel of his ear, subhanAllah. Couldn't even talk properly. Couldn't. He was one side was paralyzed. A year ago, he was the most intelligent child in the county. He was working in one of the, you know, multi multinational firms, you know, that we all know of here in the bank. We, we see these things with our own eyes. We can follow any but we don't even care about oh, such a small thing. Who cares? He says that if we don't do that, and they will continue to do that, doing that, they will continue deceiving themselves that we are, take a coin, a the tawbah, I'll do tawbah. And a time comes that the, the, that day is the day of their death, and then because their hearts have become so black, because of the consistent sins, even if they are kept, like, turned as minor sins, in shariat, but because of the consistency or consistency of that, their hearts have become black, and subhanAllah, they do not get the topic of tawbah before their death, and he says, this is the manner of the, the intidadi by the tawbah, that the day of the tawbah is closed for them. And this is what it, it is meant by this ayat of Allah Ta'ala, that Allah Ta'ala has put a door in front of them, a wall in front of them, and a wall behind them, and they've been, their veil has been put for whom la yubsiru, they don't see. And he says, وَلِذَلِكَ قَالَ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ قَالَ عَلِيٌّ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ تَعَلَىٰ أَنْهُ إِنَّ الْإِيمَانَ لَيَبْدُ في القلب نقطة بيضاء كلما ازداد الإيمان ازداد ذلك البياض فإذا استقبل أبد الإيمان ابيض القلب كله وإن النفاق لا يبدو في القلب نقطة سوداء كلما ازداد النفاق ازداد ذلك السواد فإذا استقبل النفاق اسود القلب كله فسيد علي رضي الله تعالى عنه سيد ذلك بس إيمان starts in the heart with one white dot and the more is the iman, the more is the whiteness of that dot, the size continues and increasing as time comes, and his whole heart becomes enlightened. They said, and the nifaq, the hypocrisy, it starts with one black dot, and the more the nifaq increases, so is that the blackness, and he becomes any insensitive, and a time comes when his all of his heart becomes black. Then he says, فَإِذَا عَرَفْتَ أَنَّ الْأَخْلَاقَ الْحَسَنَةَ تَارَةً تَكُونُ بِالتَّعْبِئِ وَالْفِتْرَةِ وَتَارَةً تَكُونُ بِاعْتِهَادِ الْأَفْعَالِ الْجَمِيلَةِ وَتَارَةً بِمَشَاهَدَةِ أَرْبَابِ الْأَفْعَالِ الْجَمِيلَةِ وَمُصَاحَبَتِهِمْ لَهُمْ قُرَنَاءُ الْخَيْرِ وَإِخْوَانُ الصَّلَاهِ إِذَا التَّبْعُ يَسْرِقُ مِنَ التَّبْعِ الشَّرِّ وَالْخَيْرِ جَمِيعًا مِنَ التَّبْعِ الشر والخير جميعا فمن تظاهرت في حق الجهات والثلاثة حتى صار ذا فضيلة تبعا واعتيادا وتعلما فهو في غاية الفضيلة من كان رزلا بالتبع واتفق له قرناء السوء فتعلم منهم وتيسرت له أسباب الشر حتى اعتادها فهو في غاية البعد من الله عز وجل وبين الرتبتين من اختلفت فيه من هذه الجهات ولكل درجة في القرب والبعد بحسب ما تقديه سورته وحالته ومن يعمل مثقال ذرة خيرا يراه ومن يعمل مثقال ذرة شرا يراه فما ظلمهم الله ولكن كانوا أنفسهم يظلمون. So this, to this we have explained that sometimes the good character is that unnatural and they are in the, 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 in the character of the people and it, it to start with Sometimes they are achieved through struggle, and that struggle initially is the kalifan, it is a hardship, but later on if it's done with consistency, these ikhlaq, this good character becomes habit and becomes tabiyat. And he says that when you witness good people, righteous people, and you follow them, then you get good ikhlaq. Because all the tabai, all the natures, they like, they are expert in following and imitating. Everybody imitates somebody. The way that, the way, why are you wearing this, this hat? You, you, you must have possibly seen somewhere somebody wearing this hat and you follow it. Why do we wear this kurtas? We have seen somebody wearing this kurta and we follow that. Why do we have certain hairstyles? We have seen somebody having that hairstyle and we follow that. Right? 
Everybody imitates somebody. He says that, you know, to, to, to witness good, righteous people, you know, and to follow them, you get good character because everybody has that expertise of following. And he says that everybody can actually establish on, on, her, on every good thing and every bad thing. And he says that if people have the three things, habit, sorry, is nature, the adit is habit, and ta'allum, and he's willing to learn all the time, then in, definitely this person is in the highest degree of goodness. And this person, yani who has a natural inclination, has the habit, and he consistently does that, and then he's also learning. All, that, the, all three qualities are in him. Indeed, he is at the highest degree of the virtue. And this person is away from the disgrace and from the, uh, from the foreignness of Allah Ta'ala. And he is very close to Allah Ta'ala. But he says that there are people whose tabiyat is not salim, yani who, whose, whose tabiyat is harsh, and if they don't even have the inclination to, to try to achieve good things, and to, to uh, try to achieve sharia, and try to achieve to the goal of his life, and you know, other than habitually who likes evil, and his company is also bad, he says that the, uh, there are darajat between these two people. Allah Ta'ala has actually put both of them into totally separate categories. He says that this is what Allah Ta'ala says in the Quran, then فَمَنْ يَعْمَلْ مِسْقَالَ ذَرَّةٍ خَيْرًا يَرَى Then whoever will do an iota's weight of a good deed, he will find that. He will see that on the Day of Judgment. فَمَنْ يَعْمَلْ مِسْقَالَ ذَرَّةٍ شَرًّا يَرَى Who will see an iota's weight of bad deed, he will see. And he says that this is what Allah Ta'ala has said, وَمَا ذَلَوَهُمُ اللَّهُ Allah Ta'ala never oppresses anybody these are the people who oppress themselves. They are people who oppress themselves, but not realizing that what is the goal of their life. Not acting on that, not taking the means, <coughs> not taking any means to develop themselves, not even thinking about any mujahida, any struggle to correct their nerves, to improve their character, not even taking a teacher and a guide to guide Yani to, to, to take guidance from, not even working hard on themselves, not even taking the company of the righteous, not even going and sitting in the company of the righteous, not taking any means. Who is oppressing themselves? Allah Ta'ala doesn't oppress them. Allah Ta'ala does not, does not oppress them. فَمَا ظَلَمَهُمُ اللَّهُ وَلَكِنْ كَانُ أَنفُسَهُمْ Because the moon, no Allah Subh'ana Ta'ala gives us understanding if the Sufi to understand all of this first and then also to act upon what we have learned today. For Akhru Da'wana and Alhamdulillah. is the zikr of the heart. So, just close your eyes with this intention that Allah Ta'ala's mercy is falling on the heart. And the heart is joined the zikr of Allah with his blessed name. Allah, Allah, Allah. Who is it? Yanko Kupankin. Sarko Jokani, the Sheikh of Man, think Allah gave him a day. And the Lord did Allah to zikr Kara, like an arm to Sad. Allah, Allah. Hava for his vana till the del day. Hava Hava hiris wala dil badal de Mera ghaflat me duba dil badal de Badal de dil ki dunia dil badal de Khuda ya fazil farma dil badal de 
प्रभु बैठा मैं अपना सर झुका कर सुरूर साता कर दिल बदल दे गुनागारी में कब तक उम्र काटू गुनागारी में कब तक उम्र काटू बदल दे मेरा रस्ता दिल बदल दे गुनागारी में कब तक उम्र का तो बदल दे मेरा रस्ता दिल बदल दे सुनू मैं नाम तेरा धड़कनों में मजा आ जाए मौला दिल बदल दे सहल फरमा मुसलसल याद अपनी खुदायार हैम फरमा दिल बदल दे कैसा दिल है सीने में इलाही जो जिंदा भी है मुर्दा दिल बदल दे तेरा हो जाओ इतनी यार जो है बस इतनी है तमन्ना दिल बदल दे कड़ा हो तेरे दर पर दिल शिकस्त कड़ा हो तेरे दर पर दिल शिकस्त कड़ा हो तेरे दर पर दिल शिकस्त रहो छो दिल शिकस्त रहू क्यों दिल शिकस्त दिल बदल दे करू कुरबान अपनी सारी खुशियां तू अपना गम अता कर दिल बदल दे जो हो दीदार तेरा रोज महशर तू देखे मुस्कुरा कर दिल बदल दे रहू मैं सर बसजता तेरे दर पर खुशी ऐसा अता कर दिल बदल दे हटा लो आंख अपनी माँ सेवा से जियो मैं तेरी खातिर दिल बदल दे मेरी फरियाद सुन ले मेरे मौला मेरी फरियाद सुन ले मेरे मौला बना ले अपना बंदा दिल बदल दे wash all the filth away and change my dead heart make me alive again give me a fresh start wash all the filth away and change my dead heart make me alive again give me a fresh start You are my Lord, you are the one who made me, so make me yours again, 
and set my soul free. I want so badly for my heart to love you and know that there is no one else above you. What will I do? Where can I go without you? If you reject me, I'm finished, I'm through. No good to offer, just my sins do I bring. No good to offer, just my sins do I bring. Empty-handed in the court of the king. But I've heard so much about your mercy. I beg you now, my Lord, will you forgive me? You are the prize, and I'm trying to win you. You are the prize, and I'm trying to win you. So let me lose myself and drown within you. فوسنا تقواها وزكيها أنت خير من زكاها أنت وليها ومولاها اللهم طهر قلوبنا من النفاق وأعمالنا من الرياء وأسندنا من الكذب وأعلننا من الخيانة 
فإنك تعلم خائنة الأعين وما تخفي الصدور يا مقدم القلوب فرد قلوبنا على دينك يا مصرف القلوب صرف قلوبنا على طاعتك اللهم حدد إلينا الإيمان وزينه في قلوبنا وكر إلينا الكفر والفسوق والأسيان وجعلنا من الراشدين اللهم اغفر للمؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات الأحياء منهم والأمات إنك سميع قريب مجيب التقوى يا أرحم الراحمين يا أكرم الأكرمين يا كريم يا غفار يا رحيم يا بدوس يا بهار يا ستار يا ستار يا ستار يا هنان يا منان يا الله يا لفلي لكسبت الكازين في مورة فأسي الله يا الله اكسبت قال وقت تبتعي تدو تدو يا الله في مورة يا أرحم الرأي يا الله Allah, Ya Arham Ar-Rahimi, please, Ya Allah. We don't know what we had that sincerity, that ikhlas, that talab, Ya Allah. That we took birth, Ya Allah. Show acceptance, Ya Arham Ar-Rahimi. Indeed, we have fallen too short, Ya Arham Ar-Rahimi. But we still beg to Ya Allah. Please accept it from us. You please accept it from us, Ya Allah. Please, Ya Arham Ar-Rahimi, accept it from all of us. يا الله يا أكرم الأكرمين يا أرحم الرائعين يا الله we have just had that intention of gathering together is to sit together for your sake يا الله out of your love يا الله to do your ذكر يا الله يا الله your ذكر يا الله out of your love يا الله and having love for each other for your sake plus everything is yours
يا الله يا ارحم الراحمين يا لكي تستاذ سخاوة تجن راستي يا الله 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 It's the highest of the heights of hikmat, Ya Allah. And allow us to use that hikmat, Ya Rabbah Rahim. Ya Allah, to work in the path of your being, Ya Allah, to take your beautiful message to every single heart, in every single house, in every single city, in every single <laughs> Allow us to use the hikmat, Ya Allah, that you grant us. Ya Allah, please grant us the hikmat and allow us to use it in your path so that you'll be able to spread your being. Ya Allah, please, because of all of that, because of this respect that we have, Ya Allah, make every word that comes out of our mouth filled with light, with nur, so that it penetrates every single heart and it changes everybody's life towards good, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, not only in themselves, but in their generations to come, to every single person is going to come until the day of judgment, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, Ya Allah, all that what we have, and we need, Ya Allah, the needs that we have. Ya Allah, please fulfill our needs of the dunya and the akhirat, Ya Allah. With, Ya Allah, out of your karam, Ya Allah, with busat, with barakat, with afiyat, with khair, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, allow us to use this dunya to, to prepare for our hereafter, Ya Allah, please. And Ya Allah, please, Ya Hamad Rahimin, we are in need of the dunya, and indeed we are in need of the akhirat. Ya Allah, please, Ya Ahmad Rahimeen, grant us all the good of the dunya and all the good of the akhirat, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, Ya Ahmad Rahimeen, with afiyat and with rahmat, Ya Allah. Please, Ya Allah, never put us in any difficulty ever in our lives, please, Ya Allah. Tell in this time of fitna, please keep all of us in your protection, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, please save us from the fitna of this time, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, please, Ya Allah, veil us from the eyes of the people who cause any sort of fitna from the eyes of the people who have jealousy, from the eyes of the people, Ya Allah, who harm, Ya Rahman Rahimeen, save us from all shurus, all fitna, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, please protect us, our children, our families, our students, our teachers, our relatives, our friends, Ya Allah, anybody who has any right over us, we bless you, Ya Allah. That please, Ya Rahman Rahimeen, you keep all of us in your protection. And always keep us in your guidance, Ya Arhamar Rahimeen. Ya Allah, Ya Akram Al-Akrameen. People who are sick, spiritually or physically, please give them perfect cure, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, please, Ya Arhamar Rahimeen, save our Iman. Save the Iman of our children, Ya Allah. Of every single person is going to come until the day of judgment. Ya Allah, be happy with us at every single second of our lives, especially at the time of our death. Ya Allah, allow us to recite kalima as our last words. Ya Allah, please make our nafs, nafsul mutma'inda before our death, just out of your generosity, you and your karam and your fadal, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, we have nothing, Ya Allah, that we can offer. Ya Allah, we not, there is nothing that we do. Ya Allah, please, Ya Allah, we don't rely on any of our actions. We don't rely on any of our struggles. Ya Allah, we rely on your mercy and your fadal and your grace. Ya Allah, we beg you that you please have mercy on all of us. Ya Allah, please make our graves from the gardens of paradise. Make the questions of the graves easy for us. Ya Allah, fill it with light. Ya Allah, Ya Allah, please save us from the punishments. On the day of judgment, we beg you, Ya Allah, that you please give our books in our right hand. Ya Allah, please, Ya Allah, give us the shade of your throne. Ya Allah, please give us the intercession of your beloved, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Please grant all of us water from His blessed hand. And Ya Allah, Ya Arham Ar Rahimeen, we beg you that you please enter all of us into paradise without reckoning, without questioning. And Ya Allah, the most of it all, give all of us your perfect vision, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, we don't deserve to ask you any of these things. But Ya Allah, we don't ask you, who do we ask? Where do we go, Ya Allah? If nobody but you, Ya Allah, we indeed reliant upon you at every single second of our life. 
Ya Allah, please ignore our shortcomings. Please ignore our mistakes, Ya Allah. Please ignore our mistakes. Please ignore our mistakes, Ya Allah. Please. Yeah. Indeed, I have the breast of myself, Ya Allah, but please have mercy on all of us, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, give us that guidance, Ya Allah, give us the perfection of our character. Ya Allah, improve our ikhlaq. Ya Allah, make us the source of ease for people. Don't make us, Ya Allah, we have become burden on your people, Ya Allah, please. Ya Allah, we beg you that you please remove the ill traits of our character. And you fill it up with the goodness, Ya Allah, of the character. Ya Allah, make us the source of ease and of mercy on people, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, please use us for the service of your deen. Ya Allah, please, in your protection and in your blessings, Ya Allah. And your, Ya Allah, our children as well. Indeed, we are not Qabil, Ya Allah. But please, we also know that it's not about Qabiliyah at all. It's all about Qabiliyah. Please accept, Ya Allah. That this is our life, Ya Allah. What else do we do, Ya Allah? Ya Allah, this is what we want to do, Ya Allah. Despite of being unworthy of doing it, we beg you that you please accept all of us, Ya Arham ar Rahimin. Rabbana taqabbal minna. إنك أنت السميع العليم تب علينا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم وصلى الله تعالى على خير خلقه سيدنا وحبيبنا ونبينا ومولانا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين برحمتك يا أرحم الرحمين الحمد لله رب العالمين